Hello everyone, and welcome back to part two of the class trial, or the second class trial in Danganronpa. And uh, in the last episode, we met uh, Genocida Sho, who is uh, Toko's other personality in her DID system. I shouldn't say other personality, but Alter in her DID system, but also just to let you guys know, this is not an accurate depiction of DID, so please educate yourself on these topics. <laughs> so anyway, uh, the blame got turned on Togami last episode. Uh, are you saying Mr. Togami did it? Then the reason he pushed the theory of Genocide Jack being the killer so hard was... Because he wanted to pin the crime on her. <gasps> so he rearranged the scene to disguise it and make it look like I'd put my stamp on it. The adorable glasses man was behind it all! I'm on fire! Oh jeez. Well, Biakia, what's your response? I see. So now the suspicion falls on me. Then I must ask, when would you say I began acting suspicious? Surely you have an answer. Ah, uh, looking back and thinking about it now, the way you were acting right before we discovered the body was a little strange. Ooh. And the locker rooms, they're suspicious. Very in suspicious indeed. Wouldn't you agree? Huh? Suspicious? It seems nobody searched the locker rooms. Let's start with the girls' locker room. You wanted to go to the girls' locker room right away, right? But since you're a guy... I should have naturally thought of the boys' locker room first. Is that what you want to say? The victim was Chihiro, a girl. Hence why I said we should check the girl's locker room. Nothing strange about that, I'd say. On the contrary, there's something very strange. Okay then, what's so strange about it? Go ahead, share with the rest of the class. There was a clear contradiction in what Byakuya just said. I need to make it clear to everyone. A new element has been added to a non-stop debate. Uh, yeah, I want to hear more. Next, we're going to add something called Truth Flashback. If you aim a, at a weak spot and hold down the left mouse button, dot, 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 then you'll memorize that weak spot. The memorized phrase can only be shot once as a, as a single truth bullet. If you shoot or change the truth bullet, it will disappear from your truth cylinder. However, you can use this flashback feature as many times as you want. If you don't seem to have the answer to a lie or a contradiction, your loaded truth bullets, it might be wise to memorize a different weak spot and use that to make your case. When's the best time to flashback? Well, you'll just have to use your keen wits, won't you? In this case, though, I will say that if you don't use a flashback, you won't be refuting anything. Well then, good luck and have fun! Uh, I still don't understand! Uh, make your argument! Okay. Makuma file 2. Alrighty. Oh. 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 So you said Byakia was acting kind of weird before we found the body. But he was acting weird. How? If you presented the opportunity to check out the girl's locker room, you'd absolutely take it. It's a natural reaction for any guy. The victim was Chihiro, who was a girl. So of course I would suggest we check the girl's locker room first. There was no time for pointless distractions. What's so strange about that? I wish you'd take me with you. What? Uh, I missed something. Ah. Duh. Ah. I need to make that contradiction clear. Huh? Where? He said the victim was Chihiro. 
Huh? Isn't that true? Huh? Huh? Did you think there was a mistake lurking in what I just said? I, I, I didn't know. I don't know where to click. Uh, before we found the body. Oh. Huh? Come on, Makoto, don't scare me like that. It makes me think something weird's going on. Uh, I don't know when to do the new thing. Um. Uh. Uh. Okay. Uh. Oh. Flashback? Huh? Oh no. Uh. Oh no. Shit. Huh? I don't know how to use this new power I was given. Uh, okay. Uh, oh, before we found the bu Okay, so I can use this to contradict him. Ha ha! Okay, I understand now. So he's gonna say, how could you know it was the girl's locker room when it was Chihiro? <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> Before you knew it was to hear? <laughs> I'll tell you what's so strange about that. Because up until we actually discovered the body, we couldn't have known who the victim was. Ah, so it was that. So your claim that you went to the girls' locker room first because Tahira was the victim doesn't hold up. This is something I would forget if I was there. I'd be like, what? <laughs> I see. That's a good answer, I must admit. Interesting. Very interesting indeed. But your reasoning is still too weak. Huh? What's wrong? Is that it? Surely you've got more than that. Go ahead, show us. What's with Byakuya's attitude? We're all buddy-buddy, but we were looking for clues. It's like he doesn't even care. I've got him cornered, but he's acting like it has nothing to do with him. What's the matter? You're not finished already, are you? There must be more to it. Th there is, I think. There is more to it. Think about it. We just talked about the differences between this case and past genocide Jack incidents. The proof you're looking for is hidden in there. Oh? Proof that I'm the culprit, you mean? The differences between this case and other Genocide Jack murders. The evidence that proves Byakuya is responsible is hidden in there? What could it be? Huh? Make your argument! Um, library desk lamp! Oh yeah, he's the one who had the lamp! What? The difference between the cases? You want me to explain it once again? Uh, very special scissors. And I use the same scissors to arrange the body. Which hero was suspended with? It was some kind of rope, was it not? That's right, it absolutely was. And there must be something very fishy indeed about that rope. Hey, Byakuya, where'd you get from, huh? I've never seen that rope before in my life. Yes, you have! You evil bastard! He's trying to say he's never seen the rope! Actually, I'm pretty sure you have seen it before. Because you see, that rope, or should I say, that extension cord? What? An extension cord? Yeah, damn straight! Byakuya, you've used the extension cord in the library more than once, haven't you? And the same extension cord that was in the library all this time... ...went missing after the murder! And there's no way someone who uses that extension cord as much as you do wouldn't discover that fact! Then Byakuya must be the one who took the extension cord! I can't imagine another possibility! 
that's really what you think, then your conclusion is something like this. I killed Chihiro in the girls' locker room, then hung her up and wrote that bloody message. I intentionally made it look like Genocide Jack was behind it. Is that about right? He's doing it again. He's totally calm. Totally unconcerned. As if he's not even involved. Wait, not even involved? What's wrong? I asked you if you think that's what happened. Hell yes, that's what happened! So that's it, right? Biaki is the killer! I don't disagree with not disagreeing! He kept calling. He kept calling this a game, right? So he'd be totally willing to do something like this to win! But why would he make it so obvious that he knows about Genocide Jack? I'm sorry, but could we hold on just a second? I. I think we need to talk about this a little more. Huh? Do we really need to? We've already decided who did it. I know, but still. There's something that's still bothering me. Is that right? And what, pray tell, is still bothering you? Why would you make it so obvious you're the killer? I killed her in the girls' locker room, then disguised my crime. Specifically, I dressed it up to make it look like it was the work of a homicidal psychopath. What about all that bothers you? Wait, what was that just now? Something's not right. Chihiro's body was definitely found in the girls' locker room, but does that mean... Can I really just accept with Byaki a- What? I just said what? Oops! Ah! No, I don't think so! There's something about what you said! Ah, uh, did, 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 did the scene of the crime? Ah! You say you killed Chihiro in the girls' locker room, right? But are you sure about that? Isn't it possible that the murder took place somewhere else? How disappointing. What kind of question is that? Even in the world of disappointments, this is a true letdown. She was found dead in the girl's locker room. There's absolutely no question about that. How could the scene of the crime have been anywhere else? Well, I think it's entirely possible that she was killed somewhere else, then carried there later. Along with the rest of the murder scene. The rest of the murder scene? That was awfully specific. Please tell me you have a reason for saying all that. I believe I do. Hey, Byakuya, did you just... Did I just take you off guard? When the story suddenly moved to the crime scene, Byakuya, who'd been so confident up till now, maybe Byakuya never even realized that the actual scene of the crime could have been somewhere else. Hey, don't just move on without permission! What do you mean she was killed somewhere else? Come on, Makoto! If there's any chance that murder took place somewhere else, let's see the proof! Evidence shows that the murder took place somewhere else. There was something that was switched between the boys and girls' lockers room. Uh, uh, locker rooms. Okay. Uh, n uh, uh, the posters? Posters. 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 Aha! The proof that she was killed somewhere else is the poster that's hanging in each locker room. Your proof is some posters. The poster in the girls' locker room was a picture of a big boob supermodel. Don't you think that's kind of strange? Why would the girls' locker room have a poster like that? I bet those massive jugs of hers were totally fake! <laughs> Meanwhile, the boys' locker room had... A poster of a super popular boy band named Tornado. Again, that doesn't really seem to belong in a boy's locker room. 
So you're saying that maybe the posters were switched? Yeah! And there's one other thing I noticed about the locker rooms. Ah! You know what I'm talking about. Right, Sakura? The spill on the floor! You're referring to my protein coffee, aren't you? Protein coffee? Well, I was in the girls' locker room earlier. I spilled some protein coffee on the carpet. But I noticed that after the murder, the stain had been totally scrubbed away. No, it's not that the stain was scrubbed away. It was moved! Ah, that one! There we go! I found it! Oh, we got a heart pack! The stain on the girl's locker room carpet wasn't scrubbed away. In fact, I found it on the boy's locker room carpet. That's definitely the stain from my protein coffee. Then, does that mean that the carpets were switched too? But, why would anyone do that? To move the murder scene from lo one locker room to the other. It's certainly plot. To move the murder scene from one locker room to the other. It's certainly plausible, don't you think? What? In other words, in order to completely swap the scene of the crime, the bloodstained poster and carpet were moved along with the dead body. By doing this, the killer was able to change the entire room where the murder took place. I can certainly follow your reasoning, but why would the culprit bother doing that? Huh? Why would they go to all the trouble of switching the scene of the crime? Actually, an even bigger question. If the murder did take place in the boys' locker room, then how did Chihiro get in the boys' locker room in the first place? Ah! Uh, to get into the locker rooms, you have to swipe your e-handbook across the card reader device. But Chihiro's handbook should have only allowed her access to the girls' locker room. She had no way to get into the boys' locker room to begin with. No, she did have a way, and I can tell you what it was! Oh wait, I did his voice wrong! I did Ishimaru's voice! I highly doubt that. Shut up! I'm telling you! I know how she could have done it! Is he right? Could Shihiro have uh, really have gotten into the boy boys' locker room somehow? Yes! Yes, yes, yes! Make your argument! Broken E handbook! Oh! Is it really possible? Could Chihiro have gotten into the boys' locker room somehow? Ah! Uh, I've got it! She must have packed her e handbook! No, it's broken! No, it's broken! She was the ultimate programmer after all! I'm sure that would be no problem for her! No, I don't think that's it! She used the thing when she was in the main hall! Oh, what thing? Yeah! Let's talk about Leon's handbook, of course! What? No! Yeah! Oh! Did I do it? Oh! I did the right one! Oh! Okay! No, I don't think Chihiro used Leon's handbook. I can't believe I got that! <laughs> Why not? Because Leon's handbook was broken. Oh, well then yeah, I guess that'd be pretty impossible, huh? I am struck silent by how quickly you gave up. Plus, isn't there a regulation against using someone else's handbook? Actually, the rules state that loaning your handbook is prohibited. It says nothing about borrowing one. Even though borrowing and loaning mean the same thing, but that's fine! In other words, you could borrow a dead person's handbook all you want, and you'd be safe. Yep, yep, yep! Hit the nail square on the noggin! Of course, if it were broken, that wouldn't make any sense anyway. So then she must have hacked hers like I said! 
She used her ultimate programmer skills and... Bing! You can't fix an e-handbook! The instant you open one up, a security buzzer starts blaring! Ooh. So if she didn't use Leon's handbook, and she didn't modify her own handbook... Maybe Mr. Negi's initial assumption is just... wrong? It seems like there's no way she could have gotten to the boys' locker room, so I guess so. Okay, then I vote for Byakuya! Uh, is that it then? Chihiro was killed in the girls' locker room and Byakuya's the one who did it? Really? But still, I don't know what else I can do. Hold on a second. I agree with you, though. I think you're on the right track. What the? You finally decided to open your mouth and that's what you got to say? There's no way she could get into the boys' locker room, right? So... Why are you so sure she couldn't get in? There's still one other way she could have gained access. What? What are you talking about? What other way is there? Well, to explain that... Why don't we take a little break from the trial? I'd like you all to come see something. We can leave? Wait, 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 wait! Just what do you think you're doing? Don't worry, this will make the whole trial more exciting. I'm sure that thought must please you. Huh? It'll make things more exciting? Well, all right then. I declare an official class trial recess. What? Really? <laughs> huh? For real? Now then, what is it you want to show us? It better not be boring or I'll be very unhappy. Oh, I have no doubt it'll meet your lofty expectations. So, shall we go? Okay, we're going on our adventure. So before I even knew what was happening, the class trial had been put on hold. We head off with Kyoko in the lead. And where she took us was... Oh, back to the crime scene. Okay. The girls' locker room? We've already searched this place top to bottom! What are you trying to pull, missy? I'd like you to examine the victim's body one more time. You want to check it again? Be sure to examine the entire body very carefully. Take your time. Examine her carefully? Like, using her hands? No, 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 way, no, way, no, way, no, way, no, way! It's probably best if I don't rub my hands all over a girl's dead body. It's not that I'm creeped out or anything, but it's just based on religious grounds, you know? Very well. I'll do it. But, but you're a girl! You shouldn't have to touch a dead body! Just let one of the boys do it! No, it's okay. I think Chihiro would rather have a girl examine her. So... Just leave it to me. Here we go! S sakura What is this? Some kind of secret girl-on-girl -girl action? Is that what you two are about? That's not it at all! Stop screwing around! Okay, here I go. I'm sorry, Chihiro. Please excuse the intrusion. Putting her hands together in a brief prayer, Sakura then began to quickly examine her body. Be sure to check her entire body, and I believe we will solve this particular mystery. Her entire body? I know you say that, but... What? This is... What does this m Oh! Ah! Oh gosh! What is it? Not possible. It's not possible. Sakura's eyes were staring, staring widely at Chihiro's lifeless form. Her massive frame trembled. 
This, this girl is. Is what? Is a boy. Now I can stop misgendering Chihiro. Yay! I see. So she was actually a he. Interesting. Thank you for confirming this fact. What? <laughs> You're joking, right? I wouldn't joke about this. And also, there's lore behind this to, um, what, support that Chihiro was actually a boy and not a trans girl, because there's there's a lot of lore, so... Just to let you guys know... Th then... Then is it really true? Oh, <laughs> he said it way more expression expressionful than me. Shihiro was a guy? Uh, oh, what? You guys didn't know? Heck, I knew that right off the bat. Shihiro Fujisaki was totally a guy. Th then he was a crossdresser? Now I'm really on fire. I wish I had killed him. So that's what Kyoko wanted to show everyone, huh? Interesting. <laughs> yes, that certainly does make things much more exciting. Yeah. Then it makes Byakuya not the culprit because if the person who killed Chihiro knew that he was a boy, then they would have went to the boys' locker room. Now let's ride this wave of excitement back to the courtroom and get back to the trial! Oh, and now we're back to the trial. Ahem, I do apologize for keeping you waiting. Now then, let's resume the class trial. We've all just learned of the shocking revelation that Chihiro was actually a boy. Let's pick up from there. Yes, well... I don't know his reasoning for hiding it, but the fact is, Chihiro was not a girl, but a boy. To think Chihiro was actually a guy, the thought had never even crossed my mind. And because the victim was male, he would have no problem gaining access to the boy's locker room. Assuming his handbook did, in fact, list his gender as male, then yes, that would be true. Of course his handbook said he was a boy. He dressed like a girl, but he was a boy through and through. Oh. So then, there should be no issue with Makoto's initial assertion. The victim was killed in the boy's locker room and was then later moved to the girl's locker room. And the killer could have easily used Sayaka or Junko's handbook to get into the girl's locker room. So, Chihiro really was killed in the boy's locker room. I still don't understand the motive by moving the body. But yes, that does seem plausible. Well, I must admit it. I did find it rather odd. I knew he felt a little off. There was a certain incongruity to his female body. This is a most titillating situation! So now everything has been connected. All the mysteries have finally become clear. Okay, well, connected or clear or whatever, we still think you're the killer. Remember? Hmm. Very interesting. This has become very interesting indeed. Ah, he's off in his own little world. What about you, Makoto? After everything we've learned, do you still think Byakuya's the killer? Well, without a doubt, Byakuya's the one that made Chihiro's death look like Genocide Jack did it. But I... But I... I think he might not actually be the killer after all. What? But aren't you the one who accused him in the first place? He just seems to be too easygoing about all this. Like he's enjoying us solving the mystery. 
The way he's acting it makes it seem like it doesn't have anything to do with him. And you think that might be because it doesn't have anything to do with him? Plus, the evidence he left behind was a little too... How can I put it? Overt? He consciously chose to use the extension cord, knowing it could connect him to the murder. At least, that's how I see it. And Byakuya, when you found out that the murder took place in the boys' locker room, it seemed to rattle you. And the fact that he told us all about how he knew about the Genocide Jack case, but it was set up like Genocide Jack murder. And then again, when you found out Chihiro was actually a guy, if you really were the killer, that stuff wouldn't have any effect on you. So that's your thinking, huh? Well, it bothers me that you don't have more concrete reasons, but... It's fine. I guess I'll mark it as correct for the time being. Mark it as... correct? He's right. I am not the culprit. I just happened to come across the corpse in the girl's locker room and decide to alter it. Wait, he decided to alter it? Are you fucking with us right now? No, I'm not effing with you right now. I'm telling you the truth. <laughs> I love how he can't say fucking. He's like, I'm not effing with you. <laughs> well, I find it very hard to believe. Go ahead. Find it very hard to believe. You're free to be executed along with the rest of us. If you're really telling the truth, then why? Why'd you do that to his body? My reasons hardly matter right now. Uncovering the culprit is much more important, wouldn't you say? Maybe he did just to expose Toko and Genocide Jack. Now then, if it wasn't me, who was it? Well, I don't think I can say for sure without talking about it a little more. We're seriously gonna keep going? We're all good, aren't we? I thought it was clear Byakuya did it. No, I'm with Makoto. If there's any doubt whatsoever, we need to explore every possibility. Because if we're wrong, we all die here. That's true. That's true. Very well then, I'm with you too. James Jake, come me in! Do you not have a mind of your own? Of course I do! What am I? An ant or something? Anyway, let's discuss this all as a group one more time. We still have to make our decision. That's very true. Our lives are all on the line! Excellent. Then shall we resume our game of hide and seek? But if Byakuya didn't do it, then who's the real killer? Who murdered Chihiro? There's one thing we can be sure that we know about the killer. The killer will be able to gain access to the real mercy and the killer is a guy! Since the crime scene was the boys' locker room, we would need a boys' handbook to get in. Since Leon's handbook is apparently broken, the killer will have had to use their own. In other words, it had to have been a guy. But that's still not enough. I need to find some more clues. Oh! Here we go, make your argument! Okay, I'm ready, I'm ready, I'm ready. Celeste's account! Oh yeah, she saw Chihiro going into the, the gym. There isn't a single clue that might lead us to who did it. Meh! What? Celeste's account is a clue? Maybe you have some idea, but I don't understand it at all. Ah, I need to take about one more time. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah. Okay. Well, clues are one thing, but... Uh, what? <laughs> Did nobody get a look at the killer? Sure, if someone saw the killer, they would have said something by you now. Perhaps someone saw the victim at one point, even though my, no, 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 it might be enough for now. Yeah, but you, you, you kind of knew it, Fo! Ah! It's over, it's all over! No! No! You wanna know who saw the victim? 
The killer, and only the killer. No! No! <laughs> that one was the one! It's not like they're just gonna turn themselves in. Game over, man. Game over. Ah, no! No game over! <laughs> ah! There is a, there is a witness. No, 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 no. Not that one, not that one, no, no, no. I didn't mean to do that. I am so sorry, Sakura. I am too trigger happy. Haha, <laughs> trigger happy havoc. <laughs> Funny. <laughs> okay. Oh. Okay. 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 It's over, it's all over. You wanna know who's the victim? God, there we go. Haha! Celeste saw the, the, the victim. I believe someone else did see the victim before he was murdered. What do you think, Celeste? Now that you mention it, yes, I did see him. Huh? Really? Oh, but I suppose only Masato knows about this. The rest of you had no idea, did you? That is why you're all making such ugly noises. Whatever, just hurry up and tell us! It was last night, right before night time. I saw Chihiro in the dormitory warehouse. Oh. I saw him stuffing a trap jacket into a duffel bag. Oh, it was in the warehouse, never mind. And then I assumed he headed off to exercise. Truck jacket and a duffel bag? But we didn't find anything like that in the murder scene! It seems like the culprit destroyed them to get rid of any evidence. And that's when he said something that struck me as rather odd. Well, I'd better get going. I'm kind of in a hurry. The hero told me he was in a hurry. But why would he be in a hurry? Only if someone were waiting for him, I should think. So, Mr. Fujisakura on his way to meet someone, and then they were going to work out together? But Hina and I had invited him to exercise with us plenty of times, and he always declined. Probably because he was afraid you'd find out the secret he was hiding, right? Which means that conversely, he must have trusted whoever he was meeting with very much. Even so, that he was willing to risk his secret being revealed. <laughs> what a marvelous friendship! The point is, whoever he met up with is the culprit, right? So we just gotta find out who it was! But knowing what we know, can't even guess. No, you already have what you need to make the connection. Huh? You know who the killer is. S seriously who, who is it? Who's the killer? Think back to the track jacket and duffel bag the killer disposed of. Focus on the details of these items, and it should become obvious who was waiting for him. Are you sure about that? Ah. You really think we can figure out who did it based on two pieces of evidence we don't have? What, you wanna track down some fingerprints or something? Even if we had the equipment for that, we wouldn't know how to use it! As was noted, the evidence is already gone. There's nothing to get fingerprints from. Maybe, but we can make certain inferences if we just take the time to talk it out. Easy for you to say! But fine! Celeste, did you notice know anything special about the bag or jacket? The bag was just a normal duffel bag from the warehouse. All the bags in there are the same, so I can't imagine what would make that one special. Well, if I remember right, there was a decent variety of tracksuits to choose from. Do you think there might be some connection between the culprit and Chihiro's jacket? Perhaps. Let's explore on that. 
and talk a bit more about the jacket he took. Did Chihiro's track jacket really hold some clue about the killer? Somehow, it's really hard to believe. Ooh! Are we making an argument? Make an argument! Oh, Celeste count! Okay, here we go. Okay. First of all, we know where Chihiro was heading. He was on his way to go exercise. So next we have to ask, why did he choose that specific tracksuit that he did? What do you mean, the specific tracksuit? I got it! He picked the tracksuit because... It matched the one the culprit was wearing! So what you're saying is... The killer was wearing a blue... The same blue tracksuit as him! My tracksuit is black! Oh, never mind! I shouldn't contradict that shit! The hell are you talking about? Just shut up, you little bitch! <laughs> <laughs> okay! <laughs> I'll do that! <laughs> Sorry, Mondo! Whoops, I got too trigger happy! Okay. Uh, my my tracksuit is black! I, I don't even have a tracksuit! Cause exercising sucks! I have a white tracksuit, personally. Oh! Then we have to see what you're saying! I have absolutely no idea! Okay, yeah! Uh, uh, okay, 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 here we go, here we go, here we go, okay, put my eyes on the money, I gotta stop being trigger, trigger happy, okay, I have a white tracksuit personally, I got it from the warehouse if you must know, did anything of that really help us get any closer to figuring out who the culprit is? No way, not a chance. Huh? You heard him, right? What he just said without even realizing it. She's right. What he said just now is really odd. How did he know something like that? Ooh! First of all, we know where Chihiro was headed. He was on his way to go exercise. So next we have to ask, why did he choose that specific tracksuit he did? What do you mean the specific tracksuit? My god, he picked that tracksuit because it matched the one the culprit was wearing. So what you're saying is, the killer was wearing... Ah! Oh! Okay! Oh! Okay! I don't know how that contradicts anything, but... Hold on a second, Mondo! What did you just say? Oh, he knew the color. Huh? What did I say? When Celeste testified a few minutes ago, she said, I saw him stuffing a track jacket into a duffel bag, and then I assumed he'd head off to exercise. She never said anything about the jacket's color. <gasps> So why did you say Chihiro's blue tracksuit? What are you? You just... Hey Celeste, what color was Chihiro's tracksuit? As a matter of fact, it was blue. And before we began the trial, did you tell any anyone that? The only one I told about any of this was you. Amano, how did you know what color Chihiro's tracksuit was? B because I... I just... Uh, I'm sure he saw the clothes at so some point in the investigation. No, that can't be it. The bag and the clothes were surely disposed of by the time we began the investigation. Then the only reason he could know what color the tracksuit was is if he saw Cherry with it before he died. That's the only possibility. Cherry, are, are you talking about Chihiro? So how about it? Did you see the tracksuit or didn't you? Just by chance, I I just happened to see it last night. He walked past me and he was carrying the tracksuit in his hands. No, that can't be it either. According to Celeste's testimony. She stuffed the jacket into her bag in a hurry. 
It was almost like she was trying to hide it. And just like that, she was gone. When Celeste noticed it, Chihiro made a point of making sure the jacket was completely in the bag. If you just ran into him briefly, you couldn't have possibly seen the color the tracksuit was. G <laughs> it would appear you've dug your own grave. Perhaps. But you handed him the shovel, didn't you? That's why you said what you just said. Focus on the tracksuit. It'll be obvious who he met with. What a bunch of nonsense. Ah, oh, now I understand. It was all one big bluff, wasn't it? Your true intention was to draw a slip of the tongue from the culprit. That's why you said you knew who did it. To put them on edge. That's right. However, Mondo was my target all along. I had my suspicions about him from the very beginning. But why? What made you so sus suspicious? That's a good question. Uh, the way he talked, the way he was acting, the way he was acting? Oh, no, that's wrong. Oh, wait. There was a certain turning point that tipped me off. Maybe you didn't notice it, Mondo. But you tend to refer to men and women differently. You only call it guys dudes. For girls, it's chick. Oh. And after he was killed, you happened to refer to him as dude. Once I picked up on that, it occurred to me that Mondo knew something we didn't. You, you know, noticed such a tiny detail? Are you a witch? She's a witch! You're positively frightful! No, I'm not the frightful one. Not nearly as frightful as someone capable of murdering a friend. <gasps> Mondo, was it really you? Did you really kill Chihiro? <gasps> uh, I, 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 I didn't kill anyone. You've been all over me, judging everything I say, putting words in my mouth. What gives you the right to treat me like a goddamn criminal? Yeah, he would never do something like that. This is a false accusation. It's true. My reasoning on that is pretty shaky. Th that was fast. Well, this does present us with a problem. It seems we are out of leads. <laughs> my time has nearly come. That's what my little ghost friend is telling me. Yeah, that reminds me. Hifumi, weren't you telling me you found some evidence? Really? What kind of evidence? Actually, you know, now that I think about it here calmly, it might not be all that relevant. Jeez, did your confidence just get up and walk away? It's fine, man, just tell us. If, if you really insist, then... Um, here it is. Hmm, what do you have there? It happens to be an e handbook I found laying on the ground, so I scooped it up. You found it on the ground, right? That must belong to Chihiro. It's mine. <laughs> we know Chihiro's handbook was missing from the scene of the crime, right? For a fact. For a fact, indeed! I love how he says it's not that good of evidence, but it's actually really good. I was totally sure I'd found it! Then it must hold some clue about the culprit, right? Well, that's what I was hoping, but it's busted. It won't even turn on. Aww. I imagine the culprit broke it to get rid of any evidence after the murder. That's odd. I didn't think that e handbooks were quite so fragile. 
you're right. They're not. They're totally waterproof and shark, shark, shark resistant. <laughs> They're totally waterproof and shock resistant. It would take an awful lot to break one. And yet, this one does appear to be broken, as is Leon's, sitting useless in the main hall. For all your confidence, this is a remarkably high failure rate. <laughs> Do you think there might be some kind of mystery in there somewhere? How precisely did the handbooks get broken? Oh. How did the handbooks break? There's only one possible uh, explanation. By hitting its weak point? You already told us before that the handbook has one weak point. Didn't you? Oh, you remember that? Sure, maybe I let that slip, but I never told anyone what the weak point actually was. I'm just letting him talk. What if the, if, the, if the handbook is supposed to never break, and two of them broke in quick succession, then... Then we can only assume that someone's figured out its weakness. You know what the weakness is, right, Monokuma? So, what is it? Huh? You're asking me? I think it's a necessary piece of information if you want this to be a fair trial. But if I tell you, and someone else decides to copy it, then that would be very not good. Just tell us already! Why would we want to break our own handbooks? <sighs> oh well. I have a weakness for pushing demands. But you're sure you won't follow their example? Then allow me to make a special announcement! The weak point of my cutting edge e handbook is. It's. When it's exposed to high temperatures for too long, it will suffer a meltdown and totally break! Okay. I flippin' knew it! You knew it? Yeah, cause I found the handbook lying on the floor in the sauna! The temperature in the sauna can reach over 200 degrees! Strange how you don't get burnt, huh? Ooh. It's because as your sweat evaporates, it creates a cooling layer of air around your skin! If the hot air of the sauna were somehow pushed directly onto your skin, you'd definitely get fried! Okay. That layer of air would get blown away! That's why you may feel burning when you move around. That's interesting. Okay. So when you're in a sauna, make sure to keep nice and still. Wow, interesting. I learned one new fact today. <laughs> That's me. <laughs> that is a mere trifling speck of knowledge. Anyway, if you found the victim's handbook in the sauna, then the killer must have been purposely trying to raise its temperature in order to break it. And who's the two people who go into the sauna the most? Meaning the culprit somehow knew its weakness. But how'd they find out? Monokuma said he didn't tell anyone, right? Indeed. Quite the mystery! What if they found out by accident? What do you mean by accident? Yeah, what if Mondo's e-handbook is broken from the sauna? What if the killer took their own handbook into the sauna, not knowing its weakness, and it broke? They'd realize it was broken, of course, and it won't be hard to figure out why. And once they had Shihiro's handbook, they knew they had an easy way to dispose of it. I won't say it's not possible, but who would have done something like that? Either Leon or Ish- or Leon? Either Mando or Ishimaru? I don't know of anyone who took their e-handbook into the sauna. I might know someone who did. 
Whoa, seriously? I think the one who might have taken their handbook into the sauna was... Who might have bro brought their handbook into the sauna. It had to be the one who wrote all their wore all their clothes into the sauna. It was... Oh gosh! Ishimaru? Wait, did Mondo wear all of his clothes? Wait, no. Did Mondo... Oh, I don't remember. No, Ishimaru wore his clothes. Uh, uh, no, it certainly wasn't me. But, uh, I mean... You seem awfully rattled, Taka. Could it be you know who it actually was? In that case, there's really only one person left it could have been. Looks like I just embarrassed myself in front of everyone. Oh no, it wasn't Taka. It was, it was Mondo. It was Mondo. It was Mondo. 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 Mondo, your handbook got broken in the sauna. Didn't it? And if it didn't, please show us. What? Why? Why do you keep accusing him? Mondo and Taka had an endurance contest in the sauna not too long ago. Remember? Ah, so it was Mondo who had all of his clothes on. Ah, I forgot who it was. And for the contest, Mondo just so happened to keep his school uniform on. But little did he realize, he also left his handbook in one of his uniform pockets. And when it was all over, Mondo discovered that taking your handbook into the sauna could easily destroy it. No, wait, hold on! You've got it wrong! He would never kill! I don't accept this! Show me the proof! The actual solid proof! I mean, I don't want to believe it either, but... But I found something that proves it beyond a shadow of a doubt. And with this, I think I should end this very long episode of Danganronpa here. And we shall prove that Mondo is the killer in the next episode. So thank you guys so much for watching. Like, comment, subscribe. Do what you want. And stay tuned for the next episode of Dengan Rumpa Trigger Happy Havoc. Bye!